Hi, I'm the Space Quest historian. Look, sometimes you just want to hurt the ones you love. Case in point, you may remember this monstrosity I showed you in a previous video entitled The Worst Version of Space Quest 4. It's Space Quest 4 running with an EGA driver that automatically downscales all the graphics from their original 256 colors down to this hideous 16 color mess. The game was never intended to run like this. In fact, it will crash on you once you reach the time pod. To produce this god-awful result, we actually copied a driver from a different Sierra product, in this case the Imagination Network, and dumped it into the SQ4 folder. Now, thanks to the modular nature of the game's SCI engine, the setup program will recognize this driver and even let you run the game with it, even though it makes the game look like a bag of turds and is essentially incompatible. But this little experiment got us thinking. What else could we subject our beloved Space Quest games to? What other indignities could we throw at them? Now, the reason why the Space Quest 4 trick works is because in the 90s, graphics cards were numerous and produced wildly different results. And as a game developer, you had to account for the fact that not everyone would be able to run your game and have it look the way you intended. Nowadays, we tend to think of graphics cards as things that make our games run faster, but back in the 80s, and especially the 90s, graphics cards could also drastically change the way a game looked. For instance, back in 1986, if you wanted to play Space Quest 1 The Sarian Encounter, but you only had a black and white monochrome display, you could do that! And here's what that looks like. It's not pretty, but the kicker is, it's not a different version of the game, it's not like you had to go out and buy a specific black and white copy to get this, this is just the regular IBM PC version running with a Hercules graphics card. And it runs in this super weird resolution because the graphics card would actually output this to a screen which would then squash the picture down horizontally to make it fit in the aspect ratio, look it's, it's all very weird, but hey, check this out, because the screen is so wide there's no room for the parser input line at the bottom of the screen. So they they actually have the command input pop up with this text box in the center of the screen, and it pauses the game while you type, which makes this gauntlet from the elevator to the shuttle bay on the Arcada a lot less panicky. Or how about if you only had a CGA card that, I know, I know, in theory could display 16 colors, but really in practice only produce these four abysmal eye-bleeding colors? Well, Space Quest 1 could run in what's known as composite CGA, which, as far as I understand, it puts two colors very close to each other and lets the wobbling of your CRT monitor sort of trick your eye into thinking it's seeing more colors than there actually are. Um, here's DOSBox doing its best to emulate what that might look like. Look, I'm not an expert on this shit. You want a real explanation? Go hit up Technology Connections or some shit. Anyway, the point is, Sierra thought ahead. Their games were built for the state-of-the-art graphics cards of their time, but they had the foresight to recognize that not all people were technology forerunners. And at the start of the 90s came the biggest leap forward in terms of graphics yet. Color depth went from 16 color EGA to 256 color VGA, and it was phenomenal. I mean, it meant games went from looking like this to looking like this. And Sierra went all in on VGA art. They started hand painting the artwork and scanning it into the computer, which left the users who were still only running EGA cards in a bit of a lurch because that meant their games suddenly went from looking like this to um, this. And Sierra tried, some might say a bit half-assedly, to accommodate this by releasing EGA versions of their VGA games. For instance, here's Space Quest 4 in its official EGA version, where some of the graphics have actually been redrawn to make better use of the limited 16 color palette. But later down the line, they just decided not to bother with that at all, and games like Space Quest 5 just ship with a driver that automatically downscales the original graphics to 16 colors. And this is pretty much what we did with Space Quest 4. We just gave it one of these EGA drivers that does the automatic downscaling, and it gladly ate it up. After all, the graphics in the Sierra games are just bitmap resources, and thanks to the aforementioned modular nature of SCI, it's up to the graphics drivers to figure out how to actually display those graphics. So, going back to doing awful things to Space Quest, well, Monochrome Space Quest 1 and 2 are pretty awful, but this is how some people actually had to play it back in the day. And same goes for this awful four-color CGA version of Space Quest 3 that I showed you in a previous video. Yes, it's terrible, but some people back in 1989 just did not have EGA cards and they were stuck playing the game like this. 
Although, for shits and giggles, if you misconfigure DOSBox and run the game without the proper CGA setting, you get the game in this frankly alarming standard color palette of black, white, screaming cyan, and ziltoid puke purple. But what can we do to truly mess with these classics? Well, brace yourselves. Going back to Space Quest 4, if we take a look at the 16 color EGA version that was released separately, you know, the one with the graphics redrawn to 16 colors, we find that it's actually running a slightly older version of SCI than the other versions of the game or something, or maybe there's some legacy code in there from previous versions of SCI, I, I don't know. We can only speculate as to why, but long story short, if you stick CGA drivers from King's Quest 4 into Space Quest 4 EGA's folder, you get this. Ever wondered how Space Quest 4 would look like if it only had four colors in it? Well, you're looking at it right now. It's so bad the text isn't even legible, and Roger in the canteen looks like some sort of deep sea creature that got hauled onto a deck and is gasping for air. And if you think Xenon looks bad, well, here's Astros. Here's the Galaxy Galleria. Here's Yulin's Flats. And here's the supercomputer. But really, you can't play the game like this. Again, because this is essentially an incompatible driver, the game will break every time there's a scrolling screen transition. And not only does it break, it goes into this perpetual pain state and takes DOSBox with it, screeching and screaming at you until you force close it and put it out of its misery. Oh, and that thing about loading up DOSBox with the wrong setting so it'll display the incorrect CGA palette? Yeah, that works here too. So let's have a look at this cyan and magenta color vomit on Xenon. And Astros. And the Galleria. The supercomputer. And the end of the game. Which also dies a shrieking death because the congratulations you won text at the end is also a scrolling screen. So, yoink! Ah, but I hear you over there in the corner salivating at the digital sadism on display. Can it get any worse? Oh, absolutely. It can get much worse. See, emboldened by this discovery, SQH Discord Denison Brandon Bloom went on a quest to shove as many broken drivers as he could into Space Quest 4. Now here's one that turns everything blue for some reason. We call it the 20,000 Leagues Under Xenon version. And here is an absolutely wonderful black and white mode that is definitely only recommended for die-hard adventure game players, and not those with poor to non-existent motor skills. So that's the first four games. Now, unfortunately, Space Quest V isn't as accepting of incorrect drivers as its predecessors. In fact, the worst thing we can do to Space Quest V is what it already does to itself. It does give you the option of running it in 16 color EGA, and that uses this god awful automatic downscaler driver, making everything look, well, quite terrible. But interestingly, it actually knows it is terrible, so if you try to play the crest cleaning sequence, you actually get the option to skip it because the color depth is just so abysmal. Space Quest 6, on the other hand, well. <laughs> Well, granted, like Space Quest V, we can't make the game play with unsupported drivers, but we can still do very, very terrible things to it. Enter a little-known fork of DOSBox, called DOSBox DAM! This particular breed of DOSBox is, as far as we can tell, very much outdated and no longer supported, but it does give us an option regular DOSBox doesn't. Direct 3D Filters. So, with some tinkering of one of the filters, we were able to produce the following ungodly abomination. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you... Space Quest VI in 16-color EGA. Look at it. Just look at it! Now, granted, it's not the four-color SQ4 levels of bad. I mean, it is ugly, sure, but it is playable. For the most part, anyway, the screwdriver outside the information superhighway office is even more of a bastard pixel hunt than before, and the, uh... The highway itself? Wow. I, I, I mean, just, just wow. But this gives us a terrifying glimpse into what could have happened if people were still using EGA cards in 1995. You're absolutely welcome. 
And so, as we make our way through Stellar's 16-color intestines, I'd just like to thank the beautiful and weird denizens of the sq Discord for once again doing all the hard work for this episode. And, uh... Oh, hey, one last thing. Did you know Sierra also released an EGA version of the Space Quest 1 remake? You know, the one that everyone refers to as Space Quest 1 VGA? That they went in and then redrew bits of it in 16-color EGA? Yeah. So this is Space Quest 1 VGA, but in EGA kind of defeats the purpose a little bit, don't you think? Oh well, anyway, that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you around the Chrono Stream. Bye!